Ooh. Can I take this off? There we go. That was straight tequila, by the way. Let y'all know that. What's up? What's up, y'all? Ah. Dwayne, um, when you were getting into this process with the statue and you kind of had to think about what you wanted from it, what did you find yourself caring about when it came to the details of the statue? <laughs> In the details. I laugh and smile because I look at the guys, my guys right here on this first um, table right here that we went through the process together and the details, boy, I am a detail-oriented person. When you guys get a chance to look at the statue, you're going to see the bubble gum in my mouth from the moment, the big red <laughs> bubble gum. Um, you know, what I wanted to do and what I feel, you know, when it comes to a statue, when it comes to this kind of moment, I feel that it has to be something that when the fans think of you, they think of your career, when they think of your life, and they think of you, what's the first thing come to mind? And so if you're a fan of my, of myself, if you're a fan of the Heat, um, I've had a lot of moments. I don't think it's nothing bigger than that one. You know what I mean? Like this is my house moment. is the biggest moment of my individual career. And uh, this was an individual moment for me to pick that. And so um, I wanted to pick it. Obviously, you guys know we played the Chicago Bulls that time. It was my hometown team. I hit the game winner versus them. Um, I felt good about it. So just just wanted to do that. And, and pick that because I want to make sure that every fan, when they see it, you know, they remember um, my career. And I think that sums up my career and that sums up um, this building. And it sums up, um, you know, when people drive by, like I was just like, man, people are going to be driving. And they're going to look up and I'm going to be like, this is my house. And I was like, that's going to be pretty cool from the street. So just coming up with all these stupid ideas and like thinking about all the uh, sides of it and how it was going to look from each angle, even in the back. <laughs> um, you know, it was a, it was a process. It was a, it was a, it was a beautiful process to be a part of. Um, I think I visited Chicago about four times and I think I stayed in probably about four hours <laughs> um, each time. It was just a great um, collaborative process with the Miami Heat, uh, with Fine Art Studios um, and also to myself and my family. So it was cool. Dwayne, I know you said you didn't know if it was going to hit you even when it was unveiled, but what was the emotion like when you finally saw it in place and for, for the public to see it? I was just like, that's beautiful. <laughs> um, I think it's one of the, um, personally biased, I think it's one of the best statues that's been created um, because of what it represents uh, for us and for me. But um Man, I just I had so many emotions, and I think I probably had more emotions just listening to UD and listening to Pat and then listening to my son speak um, and speak to me. Uh, you guys saw me. I don't know if you saw me, but I was I had a couple of tears fall down a little bit. Um, it's just I know I know it's bigger than me, you know. And I'm I'm here right now. We're present right now, but I know this moment goes way beyond just now and way beyond the years that I will exist in life and I say that because during this process I got to go down to Chicago and I got to spend like I said I spent a lot of time on my statue next to my statue was Kobe Bryant's statue getting made at the same time the exact same time um, and every time I show up it's more work done on Kobe's statue but it ain't nobody Kobe's not there I'm there I'm looking at mine, I'm touching mine, I'm talking about mine, and, but Kobe isn't. And it put everything in perspective for me. You know what I mean? When we talk about being immortal, um, we talk about the life after. Um, going through this process really like, have, give me an opportunity to, uh, to see it, to see it. My brother's not here to see, to have this moment that I have. And, um, and so I know how important this is. And I know that this is going to be way, this is going to live on way beyond me. And so I'm, I'm so excited about that. I'm so proud of that uh, for my family. Dwayne, you, uh, you mentioned getting emotional. And uh, first years I saw come down were when uh, Zaire was speaking. Yeah. And specifically talking about the obstacles and the lessons that you taught him over time. 
And you went through those here. You even had to leave and then come back. How do you process sort of the totality of your career, and would you have wanted it any other way? It's hard to say you want it any other way when you just celebrated a statue. <laughs> You'd be asking for too much. Um, you know, I think it's all parts of our lives, you know, that we, uh, we can get that moment back. We may take that moment back, but then that changes everything. And, you know, this has just been a beautiful, this last 21 years of my life has been incredible. The highs and the lows, because I've grown so much in the midst of them all. Um, and, you know, just, just sitting up there, man, on that podium and just understanding that, like, that statue's behind me. I'm like, how? Like, I'm in my mind, I'm like, what? Like, me? Like, I was never chosen. Like, I didn't even get chosen on the playground when I was growing up. Like, they passed over me so many times um, on the playground. Like, to the point that I remember the first time I was chosen at school. He's my be- He's one of my good friends now. We became best friends after he chose me. And so just sitting here, man, you know, just thinking about coming here as a young kid, 21 years old, and now a 42-year-old man, and to be able to experience something like this with everybody. Um, so this is one of the dopest moments of my life. Simply put, probably one of the best moments of my life. Dwayne, Dwayne, in the five years that you've retired, you've experienced a lot. You've had a street named after you, Jersey retired, whole nine. Like, and of course today, like from when you retired as a player to today, like how full do you feel? How would you describe how retirement has treated you and everything that you've been doing? Well, retirement um, is something I have not done. <laughs> um, I graduated from the NBA and I went to the real world. That's what happened with my life. Um, but it's what you make it. You know, just the same way I approach being an athlete is every day. I take it one day at a time. And it's hard to do that. But to be great, you have to do that. And it's the same thing out the basketball. It's one day at a time, but it's every day. And um, I th- I'm thankful for my success so far in my young, um, my young time being away from the game of basketball. Um, but everything I, that I, I utilize now is everything I learned through this journey. You know, that's why my son talked about enjoy the traffic. None of us want to sit in traffic. <laughs> we hate it. Right? You see people trying to find another route. But the traffic is the journey, and there's something in there for you. So it's been so much in my journey for me um, that I love and I experience it to the point where you're a little sad because this feels like the destination. You know, when you get to there, you know, when you get there, your GPS, what it say? You've arrived. And then you're just there. Now you got to go back, right? So now I feel like, man, is this the end of my journey? And, and this is the end of my basketball journey? It's a little sad, right? But also, too, it's, dang, wow. If this is the end of my basketball journey, ended in the statue, ended on the street name, ended in the Hall of Fame, ended in top 75, ended in all the things, but most importantly, ended in being a champion. When people speak on my name, you have to speak on me being a champion. And that's something that I always wanted. Something I got up every day. Whether I believed it or not, (laughs) whether people believed it or not, I knew I was going to be a champion. And that's not easy. It sounds easy now that I'm sitting up here and we got three rings and, you know, you guys know the story. But the story of the young kid from Chicago in the inner city that grew up with nothing. Uh, you know, we didn't even have candles when the lights went out in our house. We just had to find our way through the dark. That kid, to be here, man, I'm so proud of him, bro. I'm so f- proud of him. Dwayne, you spoke specifically about legacy and how that statue means a lot of things, but legacy is one of those things, and you specifically mentioned Bam as well. Can you just kind of talk about how you feel like he's going to continue that legacy and just the state of the team at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I... We, we speak a lot. We always have, UD, myself, the organization, have spoke to BAM at, at this level for a long time. And it's not pressure. It's just opportunity. You know, um, I mentioned Alonzo Mourning. I mentioned Udonis Haslam. I mentioned myself. And then I mentioned BAM. That's, listen, to mention you, BAM with those likes, I mean, that's respect. Because we see him as, you know, someone who's going to continue to, um, you know, take on everything that we learned here and everything that we've passed on for this organization to be successful. And um, you don't have those players. They don't come around often. You have a lot of talented players come around. You have people that do great things, but you don't have cornerstone individuals that can take your culture and keep it going. 
And so I just spoke on that, and I spoke to him. I spoke to the team, too. You heard me. All right, house divided when I stand. As this, you know, I want to be a part of winning. I ain't going to allow you guys, and this is going off beat. I was jealous watching uh, the Boston Celtics the other night because I saw KG and Paul Pierce and Ray Allen out there. I know Ray here. But I was like, man, I want to be that guy. I want to be the old guy to come back with the team, win the championship. And so it's important for me uh, to set that example and to be that example, but not to be the only one. And so uh, we're thankful for Zoe because he said it. You did not follow. And Bam has to be thankful for us because we said it, and now he's following it. And so hopefully it keeps going. Dwayne, you think about the teams that are associated with having statues out front, Celtics, Lakers, Bulls. What does it mean for this organization that's relatively you know, new um, to have a statue in the front but also Pat Riley's name on the court? What do you think it says about the history of this organization? It takes time. It takes time. You know, it takes time to build you know, the things that the Celtics and the Lakers have. It takes winning. You don't get none of it without winning. And we haven't won at the levels that they've won at. Um, but definitely we've won. And it says a lot about us. Um, and as I said 21 years ago, we, didn't, we weren't winners. We weren't considered winners. And now you can't talk about basketball without talking about the Miami Heat in whatever capacity. And it all comes down to uh, what was instilled in us walking in these doors. As I expressed out there, first person I seen was the guy who instilled everything into us, Pat Riley. Uh, when I say everybody, he came here and he created a culture. He changed it. And as I told him, you don't always love your leader when you're going through it. But when you're done with it, when you come out on the other side, man, you love him. Because he was hard on you when he needed to be, and he hugged you when he needed to. And so um, I'm just appreciative to be a part of an organization that have history and understanding that it took so long to create it. I didn't come into history. I'm a part of the history. And uh, I'm a part of building that history. And so this is just the beginning. This organization would be here way longer than me. Um, but my name would be associated with it forever. And so I'm appreciative of that. Dwayne, I want to take you back to March 9, 2009. You said it represents everything that Heat Nation thinks about you. Oh, that game. That game winner. Okay. Yeah. So I was, a I was in the, the stands. I was 14 years old. I remember the magnitude leaving the stadium. Um, when you think back, maybe that night or after the day after, when did you realize the magnitude of you jumping on that scores table and saying, this is my house? The magnitude, probably when I had to pick my statue moment. I think that's when I realized the magnitude of that moment. I didn't know at that moment that was going to be a, a statue, and I didn't know that was going to be the moment. But what I did know I did know I just hit a game winner versus my hometown team, the Chicago Bulls. I did know that I was a kid that always wanted to jump on the scores table because I saw some of my favorite do it. And so I just did that. And and I just said whatever came to mind, and what came to mind was this is my house. And so when I had to sit and decide what that moment was going to be that was stitched in stone forever, it was that moment on March 9, 2009. Did I have 48 or 50 in that game? Which one? Huh? 48, I fell short of 50. I missed some free throws. Um, I think you just play. You just do. And in the midst of it, you would, you would be able to experience some cool things and grab some cool things along the way. But you don't know where moment is going to be that moment that would be a stitch in everybody's mind. And that would be the moment for me. Um, but I definitely remember just feeling... Man, just like I was happy. I'm just like a little kid, like when it's your, when it's your birthday and everybody's there to, to celebrate you um, because of the magnitude of it. I missed the layup in that game to send us an overtime. I could have won it before that. But true wave fashion had to be a little bit more dramatic. And um, it was just a beautiful ending. So I'm glad that that's the moment. You know, that moment meant so much to me um, that it's hard for me to even express what it meant doing that against my hometown team. Uh, and being able to jump on that scores table. And every time I look at those photos, I get to see someone different in the crowd and understand that, man, damn, they had a great night that night. Boy, I'm sure the, I'm sure the small businesses in Miami that night went crazy. It's a beautiful night that we've all experienced together. And so I'm glad that we can um, set that moment in stone. Speaking of Chicago, um, people go to Chicago, they got to take a picture with the Jordan statue. Yeah. You got to do 
what's it feel like that now when people come to Miami, one of the things they got to do is I got to take a picture with the D-Wade statue. I love that. Um, I was the kid in 1992, 93, when Michael Jordan got his statue. My family and I, we wanted to go down there and take a picture. I was that kid. And so when I got the uh, the meeting in L.A. with uh, with the Heat team that I was going to have my, my statue, and we talked about what the image was going to be, and we talked about who was going to do it, I said it has to be the same person who did Michael Jordan's. Now, in my mind, I thought he was old. I was thinking he was about, about 90 to 80 to 100 because I was a kid at the time. But I said he has to be the same person because that was the first moment that I realized that that was even possible. Never even knew that an athlete can get a statue. And it wasn't something, it wasn't social media where you see everything. And so the man is here. And I thank him for, you know, not only creating that statue with MJ, but I thank him for understanding the importance of this statue for me and the whole story, you know, that was created throughout the process. All right, that's it. That's it. I'm going to go back and have some drinks. Appreciate you guys. Um, Kids, don't drink. <laughs> Adults, buy my wine. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.